Welcome to another Node-RED video and in this video we're going to look at um, the Node-RED uh, template node uh, it's this node down here this node here and we're going to look at using the template node with uh, mustache uh, formatting and what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple table an HTML table and we're going to display messages in that table and this is what it looks like here we just got a table, you can see the table outline here and we're going to display the last 10 messages in, in this table and when it comes to the 11th message then we lose the first one and we display the 11th and it continues like that so let me just show you it working what it does and we'll just go and inject the messages one two and you can see the messages appearing here and I've got a reset button here where I can reset the table back to zero and you can see it's gone back to zero. Okay, let's go through the, the flow. So we've got the inject node that injects the test message. It, it injects it into this function node here. Now this function node stores the messages in an array. Now the array length is limited to 10 messages. The array is then passed on to the, the template node and the template node inserts the data from that array into the HTML table and then sends it on to this template node here. This is the user interface template node. This is this one down right all the way down the bottom. Now this is the user interface template and this one is actually the HTML template. That one there, that's the HTML template. Okay, let's go through the flow now um, node by node. So this is the inject node and all it's doing is injecting a test message and on the topic test and we're doing it manually so we just have to click the button to do it. The display messages function here it uses two context objects to store data. It stores the data, this is the message data in, a, in an array called data. You can see there, there's the array and it stores a, a count and that's the count you're seeing here at the bottom. If the count's undefined then we set it to zero. This is basically initializing it. Uh, notice I don't use the same format here. I could have used this format variable data, ver sorry, variable count equals context or data count or zero but that doesn't work all the time which is why I prefer to use this format here. It works okay with arrays. It doesn't work okay with simple variables. So this one is preferred. And we just get the date and that's going to be displayed on the messages. And we're going to store the data in an object called mData. And what we're storing is the, the message payload. And, and because the, the payload can actually be quite large, we actually slice it. So we're only looking at the first 30 characters of that payload and we append onto that the account so you'll actually see that it's called test message one test message two etc that's just so you can see that different messages and now we push the data the m data which is actually an object and we push it into an array called data so it's basically an array of objects that's what we're we're getting so data the variable data contains an array of objects uh, this is just logging for debugging and here, if the length of that array is greater than 10, then we shift it. We basically get rid of the first element of that array, which limits the array to 10, maximum of 10. And further down here, we've got a reset. So this is just convenience. If I can reset the, the data. And you can see I'm resetting the variables here. Now, we're using context, the context object to store data and so we have to set it so this is storing it back in those those variables and then we create we create a new message object called message one and we store the data into that so we're storing data into the payload we're storing the topic in the topic and the count in the in and the count in a variable called total and then we return message one now message one goes into the HTML template and it's the job of the HTML template to take the data out of the message and to insert it into the 
in this case the HTML table. You can see here I'm using a table, but it is any HTML document. And you can see here we're using a mustache template. There's only two options. There's a, the mustache template or a plain text. So if you didn't want to insert any of the data into the template, then you just use a, a plain text template, which basically mean this is just going to be pure HTML code. Here, the property we're looking at is the message payload. Now, I don't find this very good for editing. So what I recommend you do is you just do Control A to select all of it, Control C to copy it and paste it into Notepad. And you can edit it and see it much clearer in Notepad or any other text editor. But before we look at that, um, if you look at the information pane over here, then it gives you a very good introduction to the mustache template. If you go further down here, you can see the format we're using and it gives you an example here. So this is going to extract the payload.name from the incoming message object. Notice we don't use the format message.payload.name. We just use payload.name. So we can drop the message uh, prefix. If you familiar with the function node we usually use message.payload uh, whereas in the, the template node we are only using payload and similarly if you had a property called topic message.topic you wouldn't use message.topic in this template you just use topic and we'll see that in a second so hello payload.name today is the date and here we've got the object date is monday the payload.name is fred and this is what you see here. Hello, Fred. Today is, is Monday. OK, let's go and look at this in um, the template we've got in, in Notepad. So this is the template in Notepad. You can see it's much clearer to work with here. And it's uh, just HTML. I'm not going to take you through the HTML. I'm just going to point out a few things, though. Here we've got a class of red, a class of yellow, and a class of blue. And this is for the table headers, and I'll show you that later on how we style it a little bit. And this is the the work here. This is where it's all all done here. And you can see here we're using the hash payload and the slash payload. This is the start, and this is the end. And what this little bit of code here is going to do is going to loop through the payload object. Now to understand really what this is doing we need to look at the data that's coming into it. So what I've done is rewire this a little bit and just set the messages into the debug node and here they are over here and I can then I've just injected a few messages and I'm just going to go here and I can copy them there using the copy and I'm going to paste them into notepad. You can see this is the payload object this is the message of payload and it consists of an array, and the array is an array of objects. So there's a first object, there's a second object. The topic is two, sorry, the topic is test, and the, the total is two. This is the count. And this is what it looks like in Notepad. So this is the first element of the array, and that's the second element of the array. So the message object being passed into the HTML template node looks like this message dot payload equals this which is an array of objects and in the test data i'm showing you we've got two objects in the array the message dot total which is a value of two which is uh, the two test messages and the topic is called test and that's what's being passed into the html template node so in the html template node what we do here is we loop through the array now this is what loops through the array so we've got a hash and the slash, that's the start, that's the end of the array. So the first time it goes in here, it takes the first element of the array. Now if the array is empty, then none of this code is executed. So none of that's executed. So when we go in there with an empty array, none of that's executed. So if we've got one element in the array, then we go through this code and it extracts the message key and it extracts the topic and it extracts the time. You can see it there. And at the bottom, we go further down, you can see it extracts the total there. Now the time and the message 
the time and the message are coming from here. They're coming from the first first time it goes through the array. The time comes from here. The message comes from here. When it goes the second time through the array, if the array's got two elements, then the message comes from this one here, and the time is this one here. The message comes out of the template node, this time containing this template plus data, and it comes into the user interface uh, template node, and that will display it. And this is a very simple node. It's just a div with uh, ng bind HTML. It uses uh, Angular. And again, you can't see this very well. So I recommend when you're editing this, if you're doing something with this, you control A, control C, and put it into Notepad. So this is what it looks like in Notepad. And this is the default. It, I think it just has div ng bind HTML message dot payload and the closing div tag. And I've just styled this a little bit. I've changed the background color to light blue and I've set the width of the uh, the div and the height of the div. So this is the result here. You can see the background is blue and there's the, the width and the height being set and fixed. Okay, now if you remember back to the template, then I had a class here of red and class of yellow and class of blue and they're in the table headers. So if I want to make these red, yellow and blue, what I do is I don't do it in the template node or the HTML template node, I do it in the user interface template node. So I need to change that and I've got that here and you can see I start off with a style and I have a red style, a yellow style and a blue style and then I go into the the div, the angular declaration and this time I've removed the light blue colouring from it so if I just copy that and I paste it back into the into here and I deploy it now we see red, yellow and blue yeah okay uh, another thing I want to show you is that um, when we were looking at our data what we had is we had a there's a data again we had an array of objects now what happens if we have an array of strings uh, how do we actually display it then if you go over to this github page here and I'll put a link in the video below it gives you a lot more examples of uh, handling JavaScript data and you can see here we've got a an array here of strings and to display it there we start start the loop through the array and there's the end of the array and this time we use the dot notation to pick out each one of these strings and you can see the result down here so I'll put a link to this github page in the video description and you can actually read more about that mustache templates on there uh, I'd recommend you if you're going to use mustache templates you take a look at that page and just to finish off the video, I just want to show you something you might find useful if you haven't seen it before. You remember we're using the context object to store data. And you can see them here. And you can see this is where I bring them into the function and I save them when I'm finished at the end of the function. Now, if I want to debug this and I want to see the values of those objects, if you go over to here and you look at the context data, and it shows you here the context data is under the node, the flow data is under the flow, and the global data is under the global. And you can see, if I refresh this here, it's currently empty, so let me inject a few messages in there. And I refresh that, you can see now the count has gone to three, and there's the data, it's a collection of objects, and I can expand those objects over there. It's very very useful for debugging. Uh, it's, I think you it came in on version um, twenty, I think, or dot two. Uh, it wasn't there previously. This um, context data you couldn't view it like this previously. So if you've got one of the latest versions, this is. There you go, zero dot two two zero dot seven. I think on zero dot one nine it wasn't there. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, if you've got any comments on the video then please leave them below 
if you like the video then click on the like button below and if you use social media then feel free to share it on social media and until the next time uh, goodbye